The news vendor problem is an interesting class of issues around inventory management. It aims to determine how much stock do I need to meet demand whilst minimising the chances of overstocking or understocking and the cost associated with these. One of the problems we have with this type of sales process is how much stock should we hold if we don't know exactly what we need in advance. We have to make a prediction, a forecast. One of the reasons for this is we only observe a portion of unmet demand. That is perhaps when somebody actually complains when they come into our store and they find that the item they wanted to purchase is not available. Sometimes they do complain, sometimes they do request that the item be delivered later and we put them in back order. But unfortunately not everybody complains. What is more usual, and we all know this from our own behaviour, if we go into a, a particular store or online and the item is not available, we simply go immediately elsewhere. Furthermore, Recording complaints or stockouts is not very well handled in most organisations. And what this means is a tiny proportion of the complaints are observed by inventory management who can potentially do something about it by ordering more materials, for example. So what do we do? We've no real idea what the unmet demand is and orders disappear silently as customers just leave us and go elsewhere. The demand is filtered. That means we only know the precise actual demand when we have stock left over at the end of the day. Where we have run out of stock, we've no real idea if another person was about to walk past and buy another item. We could potentially be better at forecasting if we could get all our customers to tell us when a stockout has occurred. But this is not a good idea and very unlikely to happen anyway. The balance we have to make is to make as much money as possible having stock to fulfil demand whilst avoiding excess costs of inventory. These two costs are shown below. Potentially we lose profit if we do not have enough stock. Clearly, if we've run out, then we can't make the sale and the margin we would have achieved. This is expressed in the underage cost. In other words, suppose we had lost sales, we had underordered. The underage cost is the extra profit if we had only managed to order one more unit. On the other side, we make losses if we have too much stock. We are overstocked. This is known as the overage cost. In other words, suppose we had leftover inventory, we got too much stock. The overage cost is the extra profit if you had ordered one fewer unit. A simple example. We have a widget that costs $110 and we sell it for $180. And in this case, we can sell it for scrap value or a sale price for $90. The overage cost, in this case, is the cost of the item minus its salvage value. And this is, in this case, 110 minus 90 or $20. The underage cost, CU, is shown here as the price minus the cost. And it's $70. What we have to do is balance these two costs. If we order another unit, this increases the chance of overage. And the probability of overage is the probability that the demand is less than or equal to some value Q. The expected loss, thus, is the overage cost times this probability and is known as the marginal cost of overstocking. Ordering one more unit reduces the chance of underage, of course. 
and the expected benefit on the QF unit, on its extra unit, is the underage cost times 1 minus the probability above. And this is known as the marginal benefit of understocking. As more units are ordered, the expected marginal benefit from ordering just one more unit decreases. On the other hand, the expected marginal cost of ordering one more unit increases. We can use these relationships to determine what is known as the critical value. And what we aim to do is minimize the expected total cost of underage and overage. The equation is shown in the middle and we rearrange the terms in the above equation to show that the critical ratio is the underage cost divided by overage plus underage cost. This is an important ratio. And to minimize the expected total cost of underage and overage, we will choose a value of Q such we do not have lost sales with a probability that equals to the critical ratio. Let's return to our example. As before, the overage cost was $20 and the underage cost was $70. Plug in these numbers, we determine the critical ratio for this particular item as 0 0.7778. If we have an empirical distribution from observation of the forecasts over time, we can work out what the order quantity. We look up 0 0.778 in the distribution graph and look up the critical ratio as we do here. Shown at the bottom and highlighted, we've got our 0 0.778 or 78.8% on the right hand side and the actual demand to forecast is shown by the AF ratio in column 3, which in this case is 1.3. What this means in natural practice is that the actual demand for this particular item is on average 1.3 times more than the forecast we have hitherto used. If we assume therefore that the sales forecast for next month is 3200 pieces, we can determine the actual order quantity as this forecast times the AF ratio we've just found, which is 3200 times 1.3. This means that the order quantity to minimize overage and underage cost is 4160. Another way to do this is to use a normal distribution. This is a brief summary of the main points. All normal distributions are specified by the mean and the standard deviation. Any normal distribution is related to the so-called standard normal with mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. If Q is the order quantity, mu and sigma the demand forecast parameters, then the probability of the demand being less than or equal to Q is equal to the probability on the standard normal curve that is less than or equal to z, where z is q minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, or slightly rearranging, we can determine q as equal to the mean of the distribution plus z times sigma. This becomes clear in this example. Returning to our earlier figures, we know that the underage cost is 70 and the overage cost is 20. The critical ratio from before is 0 0.778. If our previous forecasts have a mean of 3192 and a standard deviation of 1181, we can now have enough information to calculate the order quantity. Looking at the table in the middle of this slide, we see that 0 0.778 
is in the middle of the chart shown here. And if we look across the row, we can see circled in red, 0 0.7, and a column above it, a 0 0.07. What this means is the Z value related to the critical ratio of 0 0.778, in this particular case is very close, uh, and is equal to 0.77. We now have enough information to calculate the order quantity. This is shown on the bottom. The quantity we should order is the mean, which is 3192, plus the Z value we just calculated, or just looked up, 0 0.77, times the standard deviation of the distribution, 1181. And this means that the order quantity is 4101. The news vendor problem can go into quite some details. For our purposes, the general principles have been shown here. The way to approach this in the news vendor problem is to work out the underage and overage cost, then the critical ratio, and look up in the standard normal table. This works for most distributions and most problems. And in most cases, you do not need to derive or create your own distribution curve.